Recreation to order. I'm Michelle Cummings, Seal Chair of Parks and uh, Recreation. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me start over. Happy New Year. And thank you all so much for being here. We'll move now to the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after an entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. We're moving now to the consideration of minutes. Have you all had an opportunity to read the minutes of our December meeting? Is there any discussion? I'll accept a motion. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you so much. We're moving now to Metro Council referrals. Are there any referrals from council members present? Director Odom. None today. Okay, thank you so much. We'll move now to old business 12-22-01 West Nashville Sports League request permission to renew the 2023 permit of facility use for the baseball and softball fields and adjacent area at Warner Park for a period of one year contingent upon all 2022 permit obligations being met. The policy committee met this morning. Our chair is Christian Bugs. I will give the report in her absence. The committee voted to approve the request with addendum to the language in conditions of permit letter F, new language, the league will use the site for organized youth sports, deleting baseball activities, and for no other purposes. Director Odom, do you have any comments from staff? Uh, no comments, ma'am. All righty. Thank you so much. And so um, we did uh, vote to approve. Is there any other discussion from the board? I'll accept a motion. Thank you. I read it. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion passes. We'll, we'll move now to consent agenda. I will accept a motion to accept the consent agenda in its entirety. So moved. Any second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. We're moving now to new business 01-23-03. Staff requests acceptance of an in-kind donation of one Tech Smart Tech Ball table from Tech Ball USA LLC valued at $4,000. This donation is to contribute to the successful de development of Tech Ball. Am I saying that right? You okay. Right at Severe Park Re Regional Community Center. There is no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this donation. Director Odom, you have comments from staff? Staff recommend approval. Is there any discussion from board? <laughs> we got ready. <laughs> using ping pong skills with soccer and volleyball skills. And it's a curved table, like a ping pong table, but it's curved. And it's four thousand dollars. <laughs> Director Odom, any other comments? No, thank you. Any other discussion from the board? I'll accept a motion. Move approval. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion passes. Zero one dash two three dash zero four. Staff requests acceptance of a grant of $12,355.33 from the Tennessee Titans, Tennessee Football Incorporated to launch a Titans NFL flag league to be played in the spring of 2023. This funding will be used for registration fees and scholarship for ch scholarships for children participating in the Titans NFL flag league. There's no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this grant. Director Odom. Staff recommends approval. Is there any other discussion from the board? Six to fourteen. All community centers. Just all community centers that'll be playing. 
Okay. All right, I'll accept the motion from the board. Any, is, is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Zero. So, um, mm -hmm. interrupt us. Did we miss an agenda item? I thought that there was um, a Friends of Warner Park agenda item. We might have skipped that. It's next. It's on consent. It's on consent. Oh. Oh, so it's included within consent. It is. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Okay. 01-23-05, the Friends of Warner Park request the acceptance of a donation of a 7.1 acre parcel of land located at 7156 Highway 100, parcel number 143-00001500 as an addition to Edwin Warner Park. We're going to be deferring this to acquisition. 11-23-06, the Friends of Warner Park request the acceptance of a donation of a 0.53 acre parcel of land located at 7166 Highway 100, parcel number 143-0000-1800 as an addition to Edwin Warner Park. We'll defer that as well to acquisition. We're moving now to special presentation, the Nashville Parks Foundation to present an annual update to the board with Louise Bryan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and happy new year. Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Louise Bryan, and I'm proud to be the president of the Nashville Parks Foundation. I spend most of my time with other volunteers and organizations enhancing parks and recreation in every Nashville neighborhood. During 2022, we were so happy to be able to finish the Elmington Park tennis courts. This was a private donor who sought to renovate the existing courts in their neighborhood. Here's a picture of someone playing tennis on one of the courts and someone playing pickleball in the other tennis court. These courts are used all the time, except the day that we were all out there with Director Odom um, acknowledging the donor when it was pouring down raining. Okay, but that's okay. We also gave uh, some donation to Fort Degley Master Plan this year, some money to the Park at Madison Station. We donated a sculpture project funding for um, Ash Tree Sculpture Project. We also, um, I meet with Director Odom on a regular basis, and she made it very clear that she wanted to concentrate on community centers this year, and we have successfully implemented, um, we're going to implement um, a new music studio at Cleveland Community Center, a visual arts program at Hadley. We also sponsored a citywide youth event and sports teams. The last thing we did in 2022 was expand some of the disabilities program. Oh, and we hosted the Metro Employee Holiday Lunch. Historically, we've had one funding source, and that is a charitable stream of revenue from Live Nation. One of our main goals in 2022 was to diversify our funding sources, and we did that with first ever support from private foundations, sponsorships, and some first ever general donations. This year, we received first ever support from the Josie Davis Foundation, Amazon, Blevins, Inc., H.G. Hill Realty Company, Lipman Brothers, and Legends Bank. 2022, in, in the background, we were able to generate awareness and build credibility with donors. We developed a solid business plan with diversified funding. We also established a better relationship with some friends groups and continue to try to build a model for all parks. The friends groups are, 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 are organized where they want to create membership models, and we do not compete or cannibalize on that model at all. Rather, the foundation is dedicated to targeting businesses, and the philanthropic community to convince them to join us in making Nashville a better place for residents and by contributing uh, to the neighborhoods which benefit their customers and their employees. We continue to embrace all things new with the, the East Bank and the Cumberland, but at the same time being very realistic about deferred maintenance. In 2023, we're really excited because Ascent Amphitheater concerts are back, and we struggled a lot two years ago when the pandemic uh, closed down the amphitheater. We have an engaged and expanded board. My board chair, Kabir Sandhu, is here today, and we've also added three members to that board. We hosted a signature fundraiser with a lot of success this year. We held a picnic for the parks, held at Fort Negley. It was a sold-out crowd. We hired a new CPA, and we have a new, new marketing person 
we were able to do this with some support from a private foundation because what we're doing is resonating with donors and with people in Nashville who want to make Nashville a better place to live. We continue to advocate with the friends groups and work with them on different, um, different things that are important to all of us. Right now, safety and security is getting a lot of attention in all the parks. And we continue to develop our relationship with Metro. I'm very grateful to, direct, to Director Odom for our meetings. And um, I think we have a very good working relationship. It comes up with donors all the time. They want to know that I meet with Director Odom and that we have a good relationship. Thank you very much. 2023, we want to focus on programming. We feel that our house is in order and we've got a really good administrative um, budget. We want to work closer with planning. Um, I do meet with Tim on a regular basis, with Phil and maintenance, with Stevon in the community centers. I also meet with Jackie and it's just a, a wealth of opportunity. We have to be very close to Metro and we really appreciate your understanding of that collaboration. We'd like to develop an inventory of projects across all funding levels. I had the chance to meet with um, um, Fabian at City Hall and talk about participatory budgeting and all that's going on there. There's a lot of great opportunities there. These are all community-driven projects, and this is exactly what we should be working on. For 2023, pickleball and soccer are real things. I didn't know about this other tech ball thing we're talking about, but anyway. But, um, Pickleball and soccer have strong community support. They're also supported in the community centers right now with lessons and teams. Um, there's a very strong group of pickleball um, um, supporters who wanna raise some money, and we've been approached twice now by Nashville Soccer Club about doing a collaboration with them as well. We'd also like to develop better data with Metro Parks. Of course, we have the 2017 plan to play, but we'd like to develop a little more information for donors. And then um, on our side, we'd like to create a volunteer network. This is a picture from our fundraiser, Picnic in the Parks. You might recognize some of these bright, smiling, smiling faces. Um, historically, as I, as I mentioned, we, we, have won, we had one revenue stream from Live Nation. This year, we have diversified into private phil philanthropic support as well as a special event, our fundraiser. For our, our administrative budget, um, I think we'll be at about $150,000. Our net assets, we're, we're a small organization, just, just above half a million. We have a very low operating overhead. Um, I'm one person. I have a strong marketing support. I have a, a good CPA, um, and I have a board intern. The, the marketing support and CPA both came from private funding, and I can tell you that it's been a lifeline. The, the CPA, who helps us with our, with our finances, uncovered a... Um, employee tax credit last year, and the IRS just sent me a check for $12,000 in November. So it's working, it really matters. We'll have some liquidity this year to support some mini grants and some programs. Again, I mentioned the um, um, collaboration with donors for pickleball and soccer. We're also talking to a private donor about making improvements to the basketball courts at Oakwood Park, as well as uh, dog park amenities. Nashville Parks Foundation wants to help Nashville be known for parks. Right now, Nashville's going, as we all know, through a lot of fast growth, and we're known for a lot of, a lot of um, drinking and partying and downtown things. All that's fun, all that's good. My kids participate in a lot of that, I get it. But at the end of the day, Nashville can be known for parks. It can really resonate as a high quality of life place to live, to invest, start a business, and raise a family. And we always go back to our mission, and that is to provide equitable support across all neighborhoods. And we try to encourage businesses that they can make a difference to all their employees and all their customers by investing with us. So that's Bass Park on the left. It's not the oldest park. Watkins is the oldest park, but it is the smallest park. It's one of my favorite parks. And um, on the right is the graphic for Wharf Park, which of course has a community engagement tonight. So there's a lot of opportunity for old as well as new that we'd like to be part of. Our board, this year we expanded our board. Christiane Bugs has joined us. Um, DJ Woodson has joined us and Patricia Knight has joined us. I'm available to answer any questions. Um, it's been a while, but um, we brought this up at the foundation years ago. I, w I hope y'all might consider putting it back on your radar, but there was a really good book uh, written about Nashville Park's history up through 1981, I think it was. 
81, 86. It's fantastic. We really need the next volume. And so, um, mm. and if you're not familiar with it, there's a picture, you have it. We, we, it would be really great to have maybe the foundation fund that. Um, and we probably need to get a reprint of that book. It's, it's very well done. It gives great history because we have great history. But if we could add to that, that I would ask you, I'll put that on your, if you would consider it. Yeah, I, that, that, that's, a great, um, that's a great opportunity for us. Do you have any recommendations for collab collaborative funding there are, sources? There are a few people who are around that have written some book. I know, but that, I don't have the names off the top of my mm -hmm. head, but I'm sure we can find somebody. Great. But. Thank you. I want to add to that, George, uh, to what you're saying. I had a, a conversation several months ago with um, David Ewing. He mentioned uh, another volume or updating that book, too. So he may mm -hmm. be a partner sure. um, to explore um, some kind of partnership. Right. I know David. Sure. It'd be great. Yeah. I um, just wanted to say thank you. This is really helpful. Um, and to ask you what you would say would be most helpful from us to be supportive to the foundation. Would you have any thoughts about how um, the board here could be um, collaborative or supportive in what you're doing? Thank you. I think right now what, what, what my donors ask me is, Louise, what are you working on and what do you need? What do you want? So if I could get more clarity, as, as we all, all want, from the Parks Department is what what are the neighborhoods? Again, I know the plan to play has some of this, but if we could really decide to work together on a master list of an inventory of projects, anything from under $50,000 to above a million dollars. Um, and, and again, I, I, I work with, with, with Phil and, and, and Tim and Stevan, and I know some of these things, but if I could really have, have that document to know, that would be very helpful to me. I have donors all the time say, I've got $20,000, what can I do with it? Or if, if I could get you a million, what would you really want? Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard. Deferred maintenance is you know, over $80 million, but there are projects and parks that I think we could make some real, real traction on in a short amount of time with that information. Okay. Um, not a question for you, just a, a point. We're supposed to get financials of all friends groups. I didn't see that. Was it? If you could just email them, it'd be great. Yeah. I think on all of our friends groups, you're supposed to get them before. Absolutely. We, yeah. we had to amend our 990s. It was delayed, but we have done that. It's been filed. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your partnership. We're moving now to capital projects update with Tim Nitch. Good afternoon. Um, as usual, I'll just hit on some highlights since last month. Uh, the first public meeting for the First and Gay Park redevelopment uh, will be on January 12th, this Thursday at the Morgan Park Community Center at 6 o'clock. So it would be great if uh, any of you are uh, so uh, compelled to join us there. Um, we will also have the final uh, public meeting for the Wharf Park Master Plan tonight at 6 in the uh, Sunny West Conference Room at the Howard School. That is a joint uh, meeting with the Metro Planning Department. We've been ready for some time to have the final public meeting on Wharf Park when Metro acquired the 88 Hermitage property, which is the property that owns the historic school for the blind on it. They were tasked with doing a feasibility study um, for that parcel that looks more closely at uh, reuse and program for the historic school building and uh, affordable housing opportunities on that site. So we're, we've sort of merged these meetings in order to um, look at both of them within the context of the other. Um, at uh, Bordeaux Gardens, the participatory budgeting project, which is a new playground and a picnic shelter. Um, uh, we now have a, a purchase order nearly in place, and then we can begin construction on that. Um, at Hartman Park, the playground, which is primarily a maintenance division project, is what, 75%? Right. Uh, about 95. Okay. Pardon me. Um, so on the Hartman Park playground, uh, about 95% of the structure is done. There's just a few, a couple of panels that, that need to be put on. 
the what will big weight it will be on the pour and play uh, attenuating surface uh, for the safety of the children. Uh, that right there will be probably that we get some like 60 plus degree days, a string of those uh, that's hard to do this time of year. So as soon as we get that and they get that done, then we'll be able to uh, get that reopened. The other participatory budgeting project is a restroom at Hartman Park, and um, that has now been a requisition for construction bidding. And we were just notified that uh, we've uh, that there will be three more participatory budgeting projects um, coming down the pike soon. So with the, within the next couple of months, as those kind of um, kind of uh, online, I'll have information on those. At Millridge Park and uh, Ravenwood Park, uh, construction continues on those, although the weather has not helped us at all. We probably lost a, a month's time uh, uh, between the holidays and weather uh, on those. Uh, Old Hickory Community Center, um, construction bidding has been uh, requisite, or construction has been, a uh, construction bid has been a requisition for that. And uh, those are the highlights. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. We'll move now to Greenways and Open Space with Cindy Harrison. Good afternoon. A uh, few updates on Greenways. Our design projects continue. We're continuing to work on the Charlotte Rail with Greenway Master Plan. Uh, this is the month, it seems like, for community meetings. So in addition to the Wharf Park and First and Gay, which both have Greenway components, uh, we've also got a community meeting coming up January the 23rd at Severe Park Community Center for the next phase of the 440 Greenway. We've actually got two 440 projects in design right now. Um, this public meeting is for the segment that would connect Severe Park to Gale Lane Park to Browns Creek Park. And we're continuing the design on the connection right outside our door from the 440 Greenway down to Centennial Park. And um, we're adding two feasibility studies. One would be the, a look at how we can connect Fort Negley to Browns Creek, um, future Browns Creek Greenway um, via Greenway. And also whether or not we can connect Wharf Park to Cumberland Park at a lower section of the Greenway. Right now we've got the Cumberland River Greenway that goes up to Rolling Mill Hill, and then we'll look at going through 88 Hermitage and Wharf Park, um, but we're looking at that other, other possibility. And we, it looks like uh, Council has approved a second reading, the Lachlan Springs edition, that's another four acres to that park. So it'll go for third reading uh, at the next council meeting and um, we'll look forward to basically doubling the size of, of that park. Um, and then as you know, I'm always trying to do public private partnerships on Greenway. So there's two additional uh, recent public meetings uh, for proposed developments on the Richland Creek Greenway. One is at the HG Hill Center adjacent to St. Thomas West. Um, and we're continuing to talk about how that greenway can be extended through that property. And then just uh, on the other side of White Bridge Road, we've been made aware of a new uh, proposed redevelopment of the Bellmead Plaza where the Kroger is, which would also involve um, a greenway extension there. So stay tuned on those. That's it. If you have any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank okay, you, Cindy. thank you. Moving to upcoming special activities and events with Jackie Jones. Happy New Year, everybody. So even though we don't have a lot of what I like to call venue oriented types of events going on uh, in the park because of the weather, nevertheless, we have everything going on through our community centers, our nature centers, the sportsplex, uh, Fort Negley, the Parthenon, and so on. Uh, I'm just going to run through just a very few of them. You can always go on our website, hit us up on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram for more information. So I'm just going to run through these very, very quickly. Today, uh, from 5 to 7 p.m., and every Tuesday and Thursday, our staff at Hartman Park Regional Center is having what they call, or what is called, a drum line. A drum line, for those of you who may not know, is a very popular drumming competition 
uh, with high school and college students. Um, during that program, they will be teaching uh, marching, cadence, theory, and competition. So I would imagine probably by the end of the spring, they will be in competition with either another community center or maybe a school, who knows. Um, on the 16th, Bellevue Community Center, along with our other community center, will kick off his 2023 youth programs. Some of the programs they will be offering to the youth in the area and actually uh, when you think about it, our community centers, it will be all throughout Nashville, uh, includes uh, photography, indoor soccer, video production, and more. January this month offers the best time to see the stars, the moons, the galaxies, and everything. So Warner Parks is offering a winter star party. Uh, that is on Saturday, January 28th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, it's a great place to get away, see the stars, and appreciate all of the fine programs that Metro Parks has to offer if you should decide to go. And uh, beginning February 3rd, which is prior to the next board meeting, the next exhibit at the Arts Center is with the Nashville Calligraphies Guild, and it features artists Sandy Spain and Larry Rogers. And that concludes my report for now. Any questions for Jackie? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. Report of the director, Director Odom. Thank you. Um, I'll start out with uh, talking about Brookmead Park. As you all know, Brookmead Clark, uh, Park officially closed uh, for remediation uh, on January 4th. Uh, at this point, we don't have a def definite timeline for remediation. Um, our fencing contractor started working um, there on Monday. Um, and last week, late last week, our maintenance team began um, cleanup. Um, and as you may know, uh, cleanup is weather dependent and may take up to four months. It'll take several, several months. There's a lot to, to clean up. Uh, after cleanup is assessment, which means determining the extent of soil contamination, environmental hazards, and other factors that could be harmful. The assessment will determine the length of time and type of remediation needed. Uh, we won't have an estimate of a time frame for remediation and renovations and repairs or reopening the park until after the assessment is completed. Um, during this entire time, park police will um, patrol the, the area on a regular basis. Um, thank you to, I'll say thank you to all of you all as park board members for your leadership, uh, dedication to, to helping us move through uh, to this phase of um, working to um, repair the park. I wanna say a special thank you to uh, park police, to our maintenance division, to Jackie Jones who, um, have been diligent in attending um, committee meetings on a weekly basis and uh, representing our department. Next, I'd like to talk about, um, as I mentioned before, uh, preparation for our 2024 um, operating budget submission. Um, budget instructions have been distributed and I think our um, our submission is due February 10th, and we will begin to work as a department to uh, build a draft submission, and I will share that with you all um, in addition to the information that I told you I would send you um, later today about the capital spending plan. Included in, um, in the budget instructions um, are a 2% uh, budget reduction, and so a scenario for that, that was the same as last year. And uh, I think it's been typical for departments to, to uh, be requested to submit that, not that it would be implemented, but I know that the economy um, is still a bit unstable, so better to have that and, and to go through that exercise. It actually is a, a very productive exercise for, for our department. Um, cold temperatures cause lots of, uh, lots of uh, issues in our buildings over the holidays. Uh, we had um, uh, damage to pipes at Ted Rhodes Golf Course, Sportsplex, Beeman Nature Center, and Paradise Ridge um, Community Centers, as well as a few other 
other places. And I want to say again, a special thank you to our maintenance division who worked over the holiday season uh, to make sure that um, the leaks and any damage damages uh, were repaired. Um, as has been the case, throughout this past year, and we have discussed on a number of occasions, we are still working to fill vacancies throughout the department. Um, right now of our uh, about 1,300 positions, and that's head count, not FTE. The FTE associated with that is about 600. Um, so of our 1,300 positions, um, 984 are filled and about 327 are vacant. That does include seasonals. Um, again, we're working to, to fill those, and we will begin uh, to work toward filling um, vacancies in February, as is typical. Um, we have um, 39 positions of the 39 positions budgeted for the Park Police Division. 22 of those are vacant. Um, lots, of, Most of those are trainee positions. And again, we have had some success, uh, thanks to Captain Proctor and his team, uh, but again, we are working diligently to, um, to fill those positions. In collaborations with the Metro Action Commission's Power Youth Program, we'll start our first paid lifeguard academy at Napier Community Center this spring. The program will allow 10 teams from the Napier community an opportunity to participate in a 10-week paid training program to prepare them to successfully complete the lifeguard prerequisites and certification program. This program will be very impactful but not by not only providing teens with a life-saving skill, but it'll also um, allow them an opportunity to provide a service in the community where they live. Um, and then I think finally, um, our Metro Dance Division is happy to partner with Winship Boyd on her Africa Nashville project, which aims to connect Nashville musicians and dancers with world-class musicians and dancers from West Africa. All four guest artists for the Africa Nashville project have received their visas and will arrive at the end of January. We are developing a partnership with Hartman Park for the West African Dance and Drum Spring Break Camp for Youth. We're also working with the senior line dancers for a cross-cultural exchange with the seniors and artists sharing and learning each other's dances. Um, those just a couple of things I wanted to highlight that are going on in the park system. Jackie was much more colorful in her description of all things going on. I hope um, you all are attentive to our newsletters and um, uh, blasts that we send out, keeping you abreast of what's going, out, going on throughout the park system. And just thank you for your support. Any questions? On the um, assessment for soil contamination, who conducts that? For Phil. Oh. Okay. Is it Phil? Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> we have a, a, got a PO out and then Gresham Smith Partners and the landscape architects side is working on that and they'll be, you know, going through them. Hopefully we don't have to go past environmental phase one plan. We have to go to phase two, it's much more in depth, be much more expensive, but we have the funds to do those. And then once we get there and we know what we have to, we have to remediate, then we'll better be able to project uh, what, what the next steps are gonna be. Because we're also part of their goal is not only with environmentalists to, to, to figure out what we need to do to get the park back in the condition it was when we opened it originally and be able to, to to get that done as part of the remediation and renovation of the park. Thank you. And and just as information, we received eight hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars in American Rescue Plan um, funding, I think, last year for um, renovation of Brookmead Park, specifically for that park. So we'll be using that funding. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, moving now to announcements, requests for future agenda items and open items. Any from the board? Okay. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Thank you all for, for your time. Have a good rest of the day. We're adjourned.
This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.